Speaking of the Oppo Reno series, it's pretty easy to associate it with words like fashion, young, and camera experience. A few days ago, the latest model of the lineup, the Reno 7 series, was officially released with significant upgrades in terms of appearance and imaging capability. Today, we're going to go deeper into the Oppo Reno 7 Pro and show you what real updates it got. Reno 7 Pro is really impressive with a whole new look, featuring a flat and sharp design inspired by the recent Apple design. There are not a lot of curved details on the Reno 7 series, and meanwhile, it's especially slim and lightweight. Though it comes with the polished metal frame, the Pro models has a thickness of 7.45mm and a weight of 180g, which is quite a surprise considering that the iPhone 13 Pro features a smaller display but weighs more. On the other hand, due to the bigger 6.55 inch display, the Reno Pro brings a quite different hands-on feeling than most other models did before. Probably for those who are used to curved bags, it can be a little bit uncomfortable when holding it for a long while. There are three colors for options, Morning Gold, Starry Night Black, and Star Rain Wish. Well, the color names sound a bit strange, but they're named so for a reason. So let's take a look at the Star Rain variants in our hand. On the bag, the model applies a new process to simulate a new gradient texture of Star Rain. They claim that they leave 1.2 million fine traces on the back cover and make it like a meteor shower across the night sky. That is just gorgeous. Meanwhile, the new process also brings much better scratch and fingerprint resistance. But this process is a little bit delicate, the back feels a bit slippery. The new design also includes a new triple camera setup, adopting a module that is divided between a glossy part and a slightly raised knurled part for the primary sensor. The other two sensors are an 8 megapixel ultra wide one and another 2 megapixel macro sensor. And around the camera module, you would find a really interesting detail. The protrusion under the rear camera is used to include a notification LED ring light. Now let's move to the front face. This optimized narrow bezel on the phone is such a pleasant surprise with the fantastic screen to body ratio of 92.8% which brings an even more stunning visual experience when looking at the display. The AMOLED 90Hz hole punch display has the touch sampling at 180Hz with Gorilla Glass 5 protection. For display quality, it's not exactly a top option at this price range, but thanks to the super narrow bezels, it still has a pretty good visual experience and a good support for HDR content. The Reno 7 Pro is powered by the MTK Dimensity 1200 Max. That varies from the standard model which was featuring the Snapdragon 778G. According to the results we got from the benchmarks, it's pretty obvious that the MTK chipset can deliver performance that almost equals the Snapdragon 870. Compared to the standard Reno 7, the Pro boasts upgraded 256GB of UFC 3.5 storage, stereo speakers, and an X-axis vibration motor. All these upgraded features greatly improve its gaming performance and experience. That I'm breaking down Everybody knows I ain't faking now Everybody knows my heart's faking now Yeah, she hates me now I made mistakes, but now I don't ever want to be alone I don't really ever feel at home On my own, in the zone That's the only way I know Feeling low, about to blow back up I won't ever let the doubt creep in Gotta pop a couple more aspirin I don't think I'll ever let you in Easier to break it off, best friends I don't really understand myself I don't really understand, need help I don't want to be left on the shelf Couldn't even hear me if I yelled It's so good Another surprise for gamers is the pre-installed gaming assistant software and with the software actions like keeping games running in the background 
and turning on pro gamer mode for best performance now are all available on this phone even though it's not designed as a gaming phone. In the actual gaming test, PUBG Mobile didn't put any pressure on it and the frame rate was stably kept at 60 frames per second. While in Genshin Impact, the phone seems to apply a more conservative strategy to maintain a stable running state but relatively lock it on 50 frames per second. But eventually, the average frame rate of 50.1 frames per second is not bad at all. In another game, the Nemium Legends, the game experienced much more fluctuations and the frame rate eventually reached 41.7 frames per second. The triple camera module is another big selling point for Reno 7 series, so let's check some photos shot on the Reno 7 Pro. The images shot on the 50 megapixel Xiaomi IMX 709 are pretty decent with great dynamic range even when taking pictures facing the sun. The exposure was still excellent with great shadow detail. The colors are pretty close to what we actually see in real life and it also does a great job of solving the purple fringing issue. And under portrait mode, the images shot on the main camera also present a wonderful bokeh effect, naturally stimulating the light spots with different apertures. As for the wide-angle camera, the images are not as surprising as what we got on the main camera. Due to the limits of 8 megapixel resolution, the samples do not look very sharp and the dynamic range is not as impressive as the main camera. Sometimes it also loses control over the exposure for brightness. As we move to the night shooting, we found that the night mode on the Reno 7 Pro works pretty well. No matter for the main camera or the wide angle sensor, it's greatly improved the overall brightness and reserved much more detail for night shooting. Especially for the main camera, the restoration of the night sense looks pretty natural with a better pureness. As for the wide angle sensors, the improvement is definitely more visible and effective. Speaking of the front camera, the AI algorithm tends to offer beauty effects for portrait shooting even when there is no retouch being activated. In addition, it also has wide options of makeup and filters for users. Well, it's probably more attractive and useful for female users. The third sensor is a macro sensor for extremely close shooting, but we didn't really find anything special from other macro sensors, so just check the samples here on your own. The combination of a 4500 mAh battery and a 65 watt fast charge also provided great power support for the Reno 7 Pro. With the included 55 watt charger, it could charge back to 50% of power within just 15 minutes and be fully charged in just 35 minutes. And here is the simple battery life test we did on the Reno 7 Pro, at least from the results, it performed pretty well. And by the way, the color 12 OS run on the Reno 7 Pro looks pretty nice and during our time with the device, it offered a pretty smooth experience with the 90Hz display. Though we still want to complain about it not having a 120Hz option. So that's it. It's hard to define the Reno 7 Pro as a flagship model or a flagship killer. To some extent, it did create a category for those who focus more on good design, premium build, and a delightful camera experience. But on the other hand, it also finds obvious drawbacks of this phone, such as the not very premium display and relatively high pricing. So we're still wondering whether the 7 Pro will still succeed with this series in the market. What do you think of the Reno 7 Pro? Share your views with us down below. Thanks for watching, there are a lot of new phones coming up at the end of the year, subscribe to make sure that you don't miss them and I'll see you in the next one.